April 20th, 2010, 9.56 p.m. An explosion rocks the BP Deepwater Horizon oil drilling platform stationed 41 miles off the coast of southern Louisiana, sending over the next 87 days 3.19 million barrels of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. 3.19 million barrels of oil. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just put that number into perspective. If you had 3.19 million barrels of water, you could sustain the average American family's water consumption needs for the next 855 years. The cleanup methods used during the BP oil spill weren't exactly what you would call ideal. Most of the oil was burnt off the surface or simply dispersed by ocean currents, and only about 3% was skimmed from the surface and recollected. Now, around the same time this was happening, I was 10 years old and in fifth grade, and in our elementary school, Irwin, we had this little invention convention at the end of the year where all the fifth graders would come up with an idea and display it in front of their peers and the community. And everyone would go, wow. <laughs> now, I had no project at the time. But I thought, what if I combined a passion I had for robotics that started when I was six years old, when my dad first bought me Lego Mindstorms, with the very real problem that was the BP oil spill. My young mind made an association. Robots solve problems. Oil is a problem. So let's make robots solve oil. And that's where the story of Orca really begins. I spent a long time on the greatest research platform in the world, Google, which inevitably leads you to Wikipedia. And I typed all sorts of questions into Google, and they were really phenomenal. Here's one. <laughs> the best part is you all think I'm kidding. But questions like this, what is water, what is oil? Do oil and water mix? How do they mix? How do we separate them? How do we build a robot? They're essential when you're starting a project like Orca. And it wasn't until 2015 that I really had enough information to say, you know what, let's go for it. And that brings me to prototype one. The first Orca prototype can be summed up very simply as a complete disaster of all proportions. It was too big, too heavy, sealed with duct tape, put together with hot glue. The, the filter was straight out of my mom's coffee machine. And while building it, I almost set fire to my own basement twice. <laughs> my mom doesn't know about the second time. It also wasn't exactly what you would call waterproof. You see, I built this during a time in my life when pigs could fly and boats with holes could float. And I'm sitting there on the edge of Farrington Lake where me and my brother went out to take it for its first test. And I'm sitting there adding my last lines of code to make it actually move around. And I notice it getting shorter. Yeah. But the biggest problem of all wasn't any of this, believe it or not. It was the fact that every single time I tried to write a research proposal to anyone in the respected scientific community, Google Science Fair, CTY, you name it, it was always met by a short one-line rejection letter or an even harsher silence. And to a 15-year-old trying to make a difference in the world, it was kind of tough. I spent every single day of my next summer in my basement refining the idea of Orca, redesigning it from the ground up, trying to make a system that people would respect. My mom thought I was insane. But I guess you could say it paid off. The new Orca was lighter, it was faster, it was waterproof. 
and it was more advanced. It also had a real working filtration system that I stumbled upon completely by accident. There's this material used in the automotive industry called polypropylene, and it's used to wrap around your carburetor when it leaks oil. And if you have a carburetor, it always leaks oil. And I took a sheet of this thing, bought it off Amazon, obviously, and I rolled it up, and I passed an oil water slurry through it, and the only thing that came out the back was clean water. Score. And what I had just accidentally discovered was the cheapest way through my research to actually separate oil from water. And this is the craft that ran local trials in the lake. That summer, I sent my application off to World Maker Fair in New York. And if you've never heard of World Maker Fair, it's a gathering of people from all around the world and is famous for one thing. People who take absolute junk and make it into something pretty amazing. I hear back two, two weeks later, and I quote, Dear Mr. Marotra, which was kind of weird, the committee would like to inform you that we would love to have Orca displayed. By that time, I had stopped reading because I think I was screaming. Something like that. World Maker Fair was an experience like no other. The boot to my left had a fire-breathing something, and the boot to my right had some other something that I didn't understand. But there was creations all over the place of magnitudes I'd never seen before. But the best part about World Maker Fair, what I love about it, is that everyone there is there to tell you everything that's absolutely right with your project, but most importantly, everything that is absolutely wrong with it. But the feedback only makes it stronger. We took this feedback from World Maker Fair and we made a third prototype. The third prototype was once again smaller, stronger, made of better materials, had a better filtration system, which this time included heavy metals as well as phosphates and nitrates in addition to the oil. We actually took this craft back to World Maker Fair in 2017, got more feedback and more response. Project Orca is now constructing its fourth Orca system. There it is. The craft you see on stage is made fully of fiberglass, has a propulsion system designed by Blue Robotics, and is completely autonomous. All I have to do is take this craft, put it in the water body, pull up an app on my smartphone, say, I want to clean here. And like a Roomba, the craft <laughs> drives around the water body, taking out the pollution in its path. But the most important fact, ladies and gentlemen, is it's not a prototype anymore. Craft you see on stage is a real working model set to go, implement, go into implementation by the end of this year. By June of 2018, we will have completed testing of the Natalia V4. By August, we'll have started the first local implementations. And by December, our little fishy will be cleaning water pollution outside the borders of New Jersey. I'd like to transition now to not what Orca is, but what it has become. And allow me to share with you a story from World Maker Fair, the, the second time we went back. A, a young boy, holding his father's hand, come up to my booth, his eyes are wide. And he says one word, fishy. Now, some of you are probably thinking that he kind of missed the point. But let me tell you why he didn't. I realize now that Orca is not just a robot that cleans water pollution. It is so much more than that. It's an exciting shape that gets people genuinely interested in learning about the issue of water pollution. Our project's open source. 
We're bringing people together from all across the world, all walks of life, to work on one of humanity's greatest challenges to date. And it's a story that inspires. Before I end, a couple lessons that I've learned from working on this project. Um, and I leave you with these three tonight. First, you have to learn to be resilient. As Yoda once said, the greatest teacher failure is. And he has never been more right. Ladies and gentlemen, there will come a point in your life when you realize your biggest failures led to your greatest successes. You have to learn to embrace failure. And you have to learn how to move on. Second, be bold. There, I, I tell this to every single person who comes to my booth at World Maker Fair or any other event. If you have an idea, just go for it. When the world is telling you no, you have to be the one that says yes. You have to be the one that drives your own future. And most importantly, be yourself. If you want to get anywhere in life, the most important person to be is you. The lessons I just shared with you probably sound like cliches. But when you do a project like Orca for as long as I have, you, you learn a thing or two about cliches. They're actually true. Otherwise, why would we put them in every single English essay we happen to turn in ever? And why would we waste our breath on them? Ladies and gentlemen, I started Project Orca eight years ago not having any idea where it was going to take me, not even knowing if I had an idea that was remotely viable. And yet, here I stand in front of you today. So I guess the challenge I leave you with tonight is this. Continue, your, continue the story, find your passion, and never give up. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an absolute honor. Thank you so much, and good night. <laughs>